What's up guys, uh, just a quick video here to give you my view and opinion and indeed what it's capable of. Uh, this is the Raspberry Pi, created by UK companies. Basically it's a blank system on chip, uh, it's just a circuit board that you can do whatever you want with. Uh, there's two models, there's Model A and Model B, Model A being the cheaper model. Uh, model A is actually based at £24 and Model B is based at around £31. This does not include posting packaging by the way, so you're going to uh, you're gonna have to accommodate for that. Uh, in terms of the differences, well, there's a couple. Uh, Model A only has one USB port, where Model B has uh, has two. Uh, Model A doesn't include an Ethernet port, whereas Model B does include an Ethernet port. And um, that's basically um, more or less it. And then obviously you have power ratings as well, which are slightly different to accommodate for the extra peripherals on Model B. So as you can see, uh, this Model B features two USB 2.0 ports on the left-hand side of the device and a 100 gigabyte. Ethernet uh, port as well, I believe it is. Uh, and to include the video out, we have a uh, HDMI here, which is actually capable of 1080p HD, uh, as well as the minimum res resolutions. And we also have a composite RCA uh, cable for older TVs here, um, if you wish to. Then there's our audio out. Uh, the soundboard on this isn't very good, so you won't be relying on it for audio uh, that much, but it does basically, you know, it plays your audio well for uh, if you want to stream movies and use it as a media center, etc. Uh, in terms of other ports, obviously we have our CPU uh, under here. Our CPU is actually uh, clocked at 700 megahertz, and it's basically uh, off the ARM 11 uh, family. Um, now, you can actually overclock this over here we have our camera CSI module, so if you want to hook up an external camera to it, you can. And we also have a display uh, module here, so you can hook up something like, say, a touchscreen or whatnot. There are some pins here, and uh, we're down here we have our regulators for the power. Um, obviously, as you can see here, the ports on this side. Um, we actually have uh, this device is powered by micro USB, the same type as probably your smartphone. Um, basically, the power outage it needs is 700 uh, milliamps. So I've had no problem plugging this micro USB, uh, main USB, sorry, into a TV and indeed a computer and it powers fine. Um, so yeah, uh, we also have uh, our LEDs in this corner, obviously for power and uh, to tell us that the actual uh, SD card is being used. Um, in terms of the operating system, obviously it's blank at the beginning. You do have the option uh, to include uh, various operating systems at your choice. Um, and to do this you just basically use uh, Win32 on um, which is a program on Windows uh, to write the image to uh, an SD card and uh, indeed as you can see here uh, there's an SD card slot right there uh, so you can put in your SD card uh, 2 gigabytes is the minimum um, I'm pretty sure there's no maximum um, as you can see here I have this 16 gigabyte one uh, actually in, in an adapter and it works fine uh, from micro uh, SD, so uh, so yeah. But including an operating system, you have your basic one to start off. You have a, it's called Noob. Uh, basically, this allows you to put any operating system within reason onto it and gets you started and whatnot. Uh, then you have other other operating systems. Uh, you have operating systems like Arch Linux. You have Debian. You have Fedora, um, and then you have Raspbian OS, which is like the main operating system if you like for the for your Raspberry Pi and one that you can use uh, include to do many projects. Um, in which I'll talk about in a minute. You can also have Risk OS, which is an older type of operating system. I haven't tried that yet. And then you can try uh, other operating systems that uh, indeed haven't officially, uh, if you like, um, been uh, available on the Raspberry Pi website in the download section, uh, but are supported by um, the developers. So one of the projects was a Google Lite TV. And as you can see here, this is the interface on uh, Chrome on uh, the Raspberry Pi. And uh, what I've just done is you run commands, you, run, you have to install Node.js and uh, as you can see here I'm running um, uh, I'm running a script, a, J a JavaScript file uh, called app and uh, basically I'm connecting the remote and as you can see the screen is ready and uh, now I've just connected the remote which is just a web file um, on my on any, any tablet, iPhone um, or indeed Android phone, but as you can see, this is the uh, this is the index here, and we have the time and the weather, which you can change in uh, in the file here. Uh, we'll just go into this folder, and as you can see, you use YouTube Downloader to download the movies. Um, so I'll just search for something here on uh, on my phone, and you can use it as a remote. And as you can see here, uh, we've got some videos. So you press watch, and uh, basically the YouTube Downloader has to download the uh, the video first, um, and then it will start playing on your Raspberry Pi. Now this may take some time, um, obviously depending on your internet speed. 
um, and again you can change the weather and the time through the uh, through the HTML code and JavaScript files in the, in the GitHub uh, repository um, that this developer has come up with. By the way this wasn't my idea, it just took me about a day to do this, um, it was with help uh, from someone else. Uh, so as you can see after it's downloaded the, uh, the video starts playing um, on your Raspberry Pi in full screen and indeed you can uh, you can then change the web address to uh, slash omc which is the player it uses and then quit and it will quit uh, it will quit the video uh, for you so yeah that's just a little project I use with my Raspberry Pi and my uh, general review I think it's great uh, thanks for watching guys and I'll see you again